Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. For this week, color and chat, I thought we would color out of Kira Shersteva's newest book, which is Tender Mandalas, Color by Colors. I don't know for sure, but I don't know if I've ever done a color and chat on one of Kira's books, which is a shame because she has so many awesome books out. I colored a couple in here already and I just, I love this book. <laughs> so I thought we'd do a color and chat on the next picture, which is this one. So we got lots of pretty yellows, blues, and greens. And I love that color palette. So this is going to be pretty. The next one looks really pretty too. I was going to do that one, but I like to do them in order, so. Okay, let's see. Well, I think I'll leave it up there. It's out of the way. Um, what I thought I would use is the same set of markers that I did on the first two, and that is my Artix uh, brush markers, the Orals. Um, these are... One of my newer bigger sets of brush markers um, and they come in a number of different sets an 80 and 90 and a skin tones and none of the colors overlap so it's like 200 and some colors except for there's two blacks and then four colorless blenders amongst all the packages it's like who needs that many colorless blenders <laughs> But yeah, these are really nice. You have your nice chisel tip on one end, if you're not familiar with these. And a really nice brush tip on the other end. So I do like these markers. So, as usual, I do have my colors figured out for her books. I have a lot of them figured out here that, yeah, I need to type these all up. <laughs> I've kind of gotten behind. Okay, so let's zoom in. And let's start with the light yellow. Well, not light, but yellow, which I have as 45. All right. So, yeah, we're going to start with the regular yellow. So how is everyone doing? Are you having a, or did you have, I should say, a good weekend? I am running behind on videos again. This was kind of a, a busy weekend. Well, not real busy, but yesterday was because it was Levi's birthday party. I cannot believe that kid turned two. Unreal. I can remember when I first started babysitting him. Yeah, he's a big boy now. They grow up so fast when they're, especially when they're little like that. You know, their first few years they just change so drastically so fast <laughs> he still isn't really talking much though but <laughs> usually once that starts they don't stop right especially once they hit the why stage uh, why why i think all kids have to go through that because that's how they learn right So, yeah, was kind of busy yesterday, so I didn't get to any recording at all until now. And it is after supper time already today on Sunday. So we'll see how far we get on this mandala. I know it looks rather easy, but it still, you know, takes a, a little while to do. And because I have a ton of more videos to record, 
I would like to get this up yet tonight, but as usual, no guarantees. <laughs> Yeah, never is with me, right? What has everybody else been doing this weekend? And if you got to work, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I feel bad for anybody that's got to work weekends. Unless you like working weekends. And then have a day off during the week. Some people do like that. Or you're just picking up an extra shift and getting time and a half and all that good stuff. Nice for the paycheck. It's been hotter than heck here again. Well, it's supposed to get worse now this week. It's really, really muggy. Just got done with a downpour. So that's going to start recording a little bit earlier. And yeah, it was just pouring, rumbling a little bit. Not bad, but I thought, well... Better hold off. Yeah, never know. Didn't look like anything too bad was coming, but we have had rain upon rain upon rain. We all have flood advisories out. We've gotten a couple inches of rain in the past mm, couple days. Yesterday, for the party, we had to have it inside. She specifically wanted it at their house this time rather than the park because they uh, cut down a whole bunch of trees by their house, planted lawn, and put up this really awesome big swing set playground thing with sandbox in and, yeah, like a treehouse type thing, a bunch of swings. I mean, it really looks awesome. And she wanted the kids to all be able to play on it. Mother Nature had other plans. So we were in the house and in the garage. But it still worked out good. Levi had a good day, so... Kids all had good time inside the house playing. So yeah, it was all good. And, you know, it just would have been nice to be able to... You know, be outside on the patio and have the kids play in the swing set and stuff. And Levi got a lot of nice presents. His first present he opened was Mickey Mouse mud boots. He loves his mud boots for some reason. And his little blue ones were getting a little too tight on his feet. So that's one thing Heather had on his, his uh, list was Mickey Mouse mud boots because he's really into Mickey. And you know how expensive a little pair of Mickey Mouse mud boots are. They were like, what, 30 some bucks, I think. It's like, how ridiculous is that? And how long will he be able to wear them? That's why I don't understand. <laughs> And I don't mean to offend anybody that does do this, but that spends mucho, mucho dollars on name brand shoes. You know, the really expensive ones. I'm not just talking, you know, regular name brand shoes, but really super expensive jackets and, you know, clothes. And I never did that. Especially when they're little, because they wear them a few months and they all grow them. Once they get a little bit older and can wear them for a while, yeah. I can see that. Although my kids never got the expensive clothes. <laughs> they probably would have ruined them anyhow. So is everybody done with back to school shopping if you have school aged kids? 
I hear that the racks are getting kind of bare as far as clothes and school supplies themselves and stuff. I uh, haven't actually been in Walmart in a while. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, a couple a couple weeks ago what was the last week. I can't even remember now. I actually went in to get groceries because I didn't have much to get. Otherwise, I just order them online and go and pick them up. Because we can't have delivery. I hear some of you guys talk about having your groceries delivered. And it's like, we can't have that. We don't live close enough. We can't have anything delivered here. Nope. Although our subway was talking about... I'm sorry if I'm flipping the book all over. Our uh, subway was talking about starting curbside delivery. No, we don't even have that yet. But if you do order on the app or you order ahead of time, they have it sitting on a rack right next to the door. So, you know, because it's already paid for, you just go in, go right to the right, and it's right there so but it would be nice if you didn't even have to get out of your car the ultimate in laziness although with the delta variant now i guess it's again being on the safe side all right really getting scary again out there especially with the young people and I don't know what your opinion is on this and I don't want to start anything um, but you know the should kids be required to wear masks in school or not or should they again go virtual for a while until this kind of gets under control again. I mean, boy, oh boy, so many young people are getting hit with this Delta, you know, variant of the coronavirus. I don't know. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's a hard choice, but I know the people that are really for it are really for it, and the people that are against it are really against it. But the people that are against it, how would they feel if their kid got sick? And God forbid, really sick. I don't know. Some that I think are bucking the system don't even have kids in school. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. What do I know? And because I don't have kids in school you know I don't have a personal investment in the subject but I do have grandkids in school Maddie is starting you know all day every day kindergarten now 5k you know and they all go to daycare and it can get spread anywhere and everywhere so, are you guys wearing your masks again? I don't get out and about enough. <laughs> but the few places I have gone, I did wear mine again. I had to go to UPS to return something from Amazon. And I wore it in there. And like I said, I haven't been in Walmart in a while. So yeah, big controversy there. I think it will be an ongoing one, but especially now with school right around the corner. And I do agree, I think the kids missed out 
on so much with being virtual for so long. You know, their friends, they learn so much by being in school as far as their social skills and just learning in person from a teacher. Some do well with virtual learning. They do. Um, others that don't have as much discipline, they kind of need the in-person. You know, and their friends. And so, yeah, it would really be a shame if now, because of the Delta variant, that they would have to do anything, everything virtual again. I don't think they're going to do it all virtual. I don't know. I have heard, you know, parents are opting, though, for virtual again. Which, on the one hand, I, you know, I guess I can't blame them. I have no idea what I would do as a parent. I'm glad I don't have to face that decision. It's a tough one. And an unfortunate one. But, yeah, how did I get on that? I was talking about the weather. <sighs> Still raining out there, but... There are some places, was it north or south of us, I can't remember, that broke an all-time record for amount of rain in a 24-hour period. I can't even remember how much it was. It was a lot of rain. Like four or five inches of rain. I think we got a couple inches, which is still a lot of rain. It's been so wet around here, you would not believe the mushrooms <laughs> in my lawn. <laughs> Everywhere I have mushrooms growing. <laughs> it's like, ah, there's fungi growing on my big maple tree. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty moist. And my lawn is like a hay field out front already. And supposed to rain the next few days yet so it will be Wednesday before I'm going to be able to mow lawn and that's the day we're supposed to hit 90 and super humid but it's got to be done oh it's really gonna be a hay field by then I haven't been bagging the clippings I've been leaving the clippings on the lawn while we're trying to get it you know, kind of in the shape with true green fertilizing and weed control. Because they say it's good for the lawn. I used to always beg the clippings. Um, but I told Bob, I said, with this time, with the lawn being so long, that would look horrific, <laughs> leaving all the clippings. So I may just beg him. He's going to think I'm crazy. Because now that we haven't been, you know, begging the clippings like we always were, or I always was because I'm the one who does the mowing, because <laughs> I like it. He's used to not having to run the barrels of grass clippings down to where he can dump them. <laughs> So it's been kind of nice for him. That's a lot of yellow. Wow. Phew. Okay. Well, then we have the other yellow, which is yellow orange. And that is 30. Oh, get up there where you belong. There. 34, 34, 34. There we go. Take a sip quick. It is so muggy. My can of soda is just wet <laughs> with sweat. It's just ringing wet. Ugh. Let us see. Okay. And because it's supposed to get 
so hot and muggy this week. It gets to be like an absolute sauna up by me in the bedroom, even with having the venting now upstairs. Because even with the air conditioning on, it does not get that cold up there. It can be very nice and comfortable down here and even on the cool side for me because I get cold very easy. Um, Bob will still be warm and I'm sitting there with a jacket on <laughs> and socks. But uh, yeah, it gets really, really warm upstairs. And so I had half joking, not joking, <laughs> said something about, because the feeling, the feeling fan, yeah, that's it. The ceiling fan in the living room just helps so much. And I said, boy, it'd be nice to have a ceiling fan upstairs. <laughs> I said that quite a while ago. And, uh, so today he said something about a fan upstairs and I thought he just meant uh, you know a floor model of a, a fan or a window box fan or something. I said yeah ceiling fan <laughs> and he goes yeah well there's one on sale for 50 bucks at Home Depot. I go, really? He says, yeah, does it matter what it looks like? And I said, no, it's upstairs. This is as long as it works. <laughs> and there was a, it's just a single light, you know, a round globe. Can't even see this. It's a round globe, you know, in the middle instead of the, like the three lights or five lights that come out. And I said, that's fine. I don't need it, the light to be bright up there. Now, our ceiling fan in the living room is only a one light plus it has a frosted globe to it yeah that light is not bright at all in the living room thank heavens i have my big what we call a peacock lamp that comes up over behind my left shoulder and then into the living room because, yeah, that, that makes it much, much brighter. There's five lights on there that comes out into the living room. So when I'm working on, like, color charts or any coloring or diamond painting, I have that light on. Anything other than glitter gel pens. Glitter gel pens, I can't have <laughs> that big light on. It shines just right. On my paper when I'm coloring and I can't really see what I'm coloring because of the shine so yeah then I have to have the dimmer ceiling light on but I told Bob you know rather than getting just you know the one light ceiling fan for upstairs I said what about if they have like a three light one on sale? We could put that one in the living room and move the one in the living room upstairs. I said, I realize you don't want to putz with all that today. And he just is like, well, yeah. He says, maybe I'll look for a clear shade for it rather than that frosted one i says well that would help some because when i'm on the coffee table working on color charts or uh, something for diamond painting like a couple of my big projects i'm working on i have to have both the ceiling light on and the big peacock lamp um, just because of the way each of the lights hit and it's still real shadowy over there I know, bizarre, but so I said by getting a like a three or even I don't know if they make four, I think they make five light fans, I said that would, you know, bring the brighter light out to different areas of the living room rather than having the one light in the middle and 
you know, having that light bulb covered, it diffuses the, the brightness of the bulbs, you know, if that makes any sense. He did buy some brighter bulbs that go in that particular fan because it's, what are they called, those light bulbs, candelabra light bulbs or whatever, they have the real small base. Yeah. So he did buy some brighter bulbs. It seemed a little brighter, but like I said, just with the way that that fan is made and having the single light in the middle, it just, yeah. As I said, if nothing else, you know, maybe next summer um, we could do that. We could get, you know, like a three light fan in the living room and then take the fan now that's in the living room, put it in the kitchen. Because I have a big place in the, in the kitchen, that part of the ceiling that's pretty open. And there would be plenty of room to put a ceiling fan in there. So, I mean, that would be great for when I'm baking or, you know, cooking something in the oven. And it starts getting really hot in there, like tonight for supper. Because Bob absolutely adores chili. Chili and cheeseburgers are his two favorite meals. And so I told him I would make him some chili. We haven't had it in a long time. And, you know, that's typically more of a winter type meal. You know, your hotter soups and stuff. But like I said, he loves it so much. So, yeah, I was boiling noodles. and Because, yes, we have noodles in our chili. I think it's a Wisconsin thing. <laughs> so I was boiling a big batch of noodles and then, yeah, frying up the hamburger and putting all the tomatoey goodness in there and the beans. Worst part about chili, Ugh, I don't like legumes, but anyhow, so yeah, it it's hot and muggy here to begin with. Well, right now more muggy than hot, but oh, did it get toasty and muggy in that kitchen with boiling the noodles and oh, my stainless steel refrigerator was fogging up on the outside and I opened because I have the door indoor refrigerator. So then we have like the soda, milk, whatever on the outside door so you don't have to open the big door to the fridge to get out your commonly used stuff. And yeah, the stuff inside the outside door was starting to sweat, which it really shouldn't be, but could be that it had been opened a number of times, but yeah. Yeah, windows are steaming up. Because with the rain outside, it had cooled down a little bit. So then it was so hot and muggy in the house. So, yeah, it's times like that that a ceiling fan would be really nice in the kitchen. I know a number of people that have fans in the kitchen. Because, like I said, we don't run our air very much. And when we do, we don't have it up too high. We're very thrifty that way. You save a lot on electricity bills. <laughs> I know. Y'all in the south are saying, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> Heck no. We run that air 24-7. Well, down there you guys have to. And some days up here, especially this summer, it's been a pretty warm summer. Of course, it's been warm everywhere. It's been a pretty hot summer. So many places that broke records this summer. I mean, in the 120s? Say what? Wow. I'm trying to think what the hottest temperature here in Wisconsin ever was. I want to say it was like 109 or something. That was many years ago. 
I can remember one summer where we hit a hundred for a number of days in a row. And that broke many records, which I don't think will be broken for a while. Of course, you never know. We got into the mid 90s this summer, but not the upper 90s or near 100. Our uh, heat index did, but not the actual temp. And those hundreds were actual temp. <laughs> For us in Wisconsin, that's warm. Quite warm. We're not used to that up here. I'll still take that over 30, 40 below any day. I know, some of you say, yeah, but you can always put more clothes on when you're cold. You can only take off so much, which is very true. <laughs> it is a valid point. <laughs> Don't think you want to be running around naked outside either. Well, maybe you do. Who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah, I might have the cops coming around, though. <laughs> Especially if your neighbors don't like it. Might have somebody around who actually enjoys it, but <laughs> that's kind of creepy in and of its own. Yellow green, 47. So, yeah, got to my, got to my fan upstairs, so we'll see if it keeps raining and I have to keep my window shut upstairs. We don't have the air on right now in it, like I said. With the fan going in the living room though, it's it's not that bad. And it's not raining too hard right now, so if it starts dying down, I'll open the windows upstairs in my bedroom and the diamond painting room and I'll leave the doors open. But there's really no breeze whatsoever, so I don't think it's going to help much. So maybe we will have to turn the air on. You know, even if it doesn't cool it off, even if it just sucks the humidity out, <laughs> just that in and of itself helps. All right, it's the humidity that makes it so much warmer, or feels like it. Um, I don't know if you guys seen um, my video where I compared the four sets of Brute Fooner colored pencils. It was the square set, two different, sets. so it was the 120 square Brute Fooners, which is an awesome, awesome set of pencils. Um, and then two different sets of 180 rounds that look totally different from each other. And they act differently too. Um, and then a 180 set of watercolor pencils which I was really pleasantly surprised how well they did so yeah if you haven't seen that video go check it out and in that video I mentioned the fact that I had been waiting and waiting and waiting for my 520 set of brute funers to arrive Guess what? They finally arrived. Finally. I've only been waiting for them for, what is it, about a month and a half? Yeah. I kept getting the runner on. I ended up buying them on AliExpress because they were out of stock, out of stock, out of stock on Amazon. They just were not coming back in stock. And so, yeah, I thought, well... Yeah, I'll have to wait, you know, 
maybe late you know when I, when I would order stuff from Aliexpress I got most of my stuff within like three weeks some stuff even faster than that every once in a while I would have to wait four weeks um, but the problem with my brute funer pencils was in like a couple weeks not even a week and a half maybe it said my pencils were delivered and I'm like hey no they weren't and when I looked at the tracking they were delivered to it was either France somewhere maybe in the UK I'm not I can't remember for sure but yeah definitely wasn't here so I messaged them and they never answered my question directly because I said, hey, you know, it says my pencils were delivered, but uh, it wasn't here. It was uh, to somebody in, I don't know if it was Belgium or for, I don't know. And I said, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> and then they proceeded to tell me that they were in the process of getting some on the shelves here in the States for Amazon to be sold on Amazon. And if I could wait for that, it should be next week. Yeah, I kept hearing next week, next week, next week for I don't know how many weeks. And finally I said, well, why don't I just cancel this order and I'm going to order from somebody else. Because by this time, now they're available on Amazon. And I believe it is their shop that uh, is selling them now. So, yeah, she said uh, I'll get tracking within one to three days. Day one went by, no tracking. Day two went by, no tracking. You know, I did on day one, you know, I just said, you know, any word yet. No reply. Then day two went by. I didn't say anything. Day three came and still hadn't heard anything. And I thought, well, if I hadn't heard anything by the evening, I would message them because evening here is, you know, more like daytime there. And lo and behold, they came in the mail that day. <laughs> So they never did update me with any tracking information. They just all of a sudden appeared. So I was so excited. Because this big box came and I'm like, what in the world? I knew I wasn't expecting anything that big from Amazon. So I'm like, what the heck is this? And I could tell it was heavy. Never in a million years thought it was my pencils. Because I hadn't heard anything. And yeah, here they were. So I've been busy working on those and getting them in numerical order. Oh my gosh. I finally accomplished it <laughs> earlier today. Oh my gosh. I don't know how many hours I stuck into that. And I'll explain more. Um, when I do the video of what was all involved in doing that. It was, yeah, unbelievable. And then when you're dealing with, you know, 520 pencils, it, yeah. By the time you get down to the, you know, last tray of pencils or, you know, the last colors, it, you know, goes much faster. But boy, <laughs> Starting out, it was taking a while. So yeah, I'll, I'll go into further detail when I do the video. I have to sharpen them all now. I'm going to have to plug in my AF mat, recharge it. Because I love my AF mat pencil sharpener. And, uh, yeah, they work great on the square Brute Funers, too. So, kind of works on all pencils. I've used it on my Prismas quite a bit. From when I redid the Prismacolor color chart. So, I pretty much sharpened every Prismacolor pencil. And never had a single lead break. So, 
I thought that was pretty good. Of course, you know, when you sharpen that many pencils, you do have to periodically run a regular lead pencil through every once in a while. And sharpening that many prism colors, especially because otherwise you get that waxy buildup on the blades. So yeah, running a graphite pencil through every once in a while kind of helps keep the blades sharp. So yeah, I had bought a set of pure graphite pencils where they're all graphite, duh. And they're just, they have a coating on the outside. They, they look exactly like the Koinor woodless, you know, that are just solid pigment and have like a, a glossy coating to them. That's what these pure graphite pencils look like. And yeah, really works good to clean out the pencil sharpeners. So I am hoping sometime in the near future to get up the Brute Fooner uh, videos because um, I had asked earlier if I know I had gotten a lot of comments that you guys like my swatching videos so I thought I was tossing back and forth whether to actually swatch them on camera or not. And kind of sounded like, you know, you guys would like it. But I thought rather than doing all 520 in one video, I would split it up into two. We would do a set of 260. And then part two would be the other set of 260. Then I thought after that we could do a color and chat and color with them because that tells us a lot more about the pencil than just swatching, right? We can try to blend with them to see how vibrant and how well the colors lay down. I'm just not sure what kind of picture to pick. I think maybe something with florals and leaves and things like that. Those are the kind of color combinations that are easiest for me to kind of pick out. So may look for a picture like that. Maybe something in one of Johanna Basswords or Maria Trollet. Don't know. Okay. Let's get the blue in here. We have the yellows, we have one of the greens, so let's get the blue. 74. And looks like I will not be getting this picture done because we are coming up on almost 45 minutes. And right as of now, I don't have a lot more to talk about. And that will give me time yet to, like I said, do a couple of other videos. So I think we'll just do this blue. And then we'll color good. I'll finish this on my own and then I think I'll post all three of these pictures on Instagram. I am starting to get a little bit better about that and I am starting to post on Instagram when I have a new video up but I don't know. I'm afraid it would be overkill if I did that for every video that I do put up because I put up one if not two videos every single day and do you think that would be just overkill to post when I have every single video like if I have a new flip through I know some do you know post on Instagram whenever they have a new video 
and to me that's that's fine you know just to let your followers know because many of your followers are your subscribers or if they're not you know maybe they would be interested in your channel um, from hearing about it from Instagram um, so let me know let me know what you guys think what your opinions are if I should post you know every time because like I said I am trying to get more into Instagram it's just yeah it's still out of my norm <laughs> trying to get there I did uh, if you follow me on Instagram I did remember to post my last uh, pattern my geometric pattern that I colored out of my color and create book which is one of my ten to complete this year I have three more of my top my ten to complete that are getting pretty close my uh, Cute Little Bugs by Prachdewan Sachdeva is getting close. I just colored a number of them out of there. Ooh, didn't post them either, did I? Well, in all fairness, I was thinking I was going to be coloring another one. So I thought I would just wait till I colored that one before and then just post them all in one post. Rather than... I don't know. I know some do it where they color one, they post it. They color one, they post it. To me, that's just too much posting. <laughs> and I am one where when I color one out of a book, I color a multiple of them. I have that marker, whatever, out in the living room. I have this book out in the living room because, again, that's where I color. So, yeah, I have it all nice and handy. I'm going to color a couple of pictures in that particular book so yeah then I thought well it just makes sense to just post once and post multiple pictures right it's called the easy way out all right yeah I don't have much more to go on here but like I said I'm kind of rambling on can you tell yeah <laughs> kind of ran out of things to talk about um, so yeah, I'll just quick finish this off camera after I'm done recording and it's in the process of trying to copy everything over to my laptop because yeah, that'll take a while. I have a couple of other eh, relatively longer videos to record now. So yeah, it'll take a while to copy everything over. Anyhow, geez. So, thank you so much for joining me and for watching this color and chat. I hope you enjoyed listening about, you know, what's going on and this and that in my life. <laughs> if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I put up new videos. Hopefully there will be a lot of interesting content coming up. If you, no, I already said that. And I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.